Hey, Tommy. Hey. So where are you actually located? Singapore. Singapore. Oh, wow. So what is it? Is it midnight there or 11 p.m. or what? Yeah, it's midnight. Midnight. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's dedication. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Morning, Eric. Good morning. And Heinz? Yes, good morning. Good morning. And uh, yeah, go ahead, Heinz. No, just a quick heads up. I may have to uh, bug out a little early, unfortunately, today. Oh, okay, thanks for the heads up. And Dan Jones. Hey. Hey, is this your first time on the call? It is, it is my first time, yes. Okay, do me a favor in the Zoom Slack. Could you just, I'm sorry, Zoom chat. Can you um, just write down the company you're with just so I can, uh, uh, unless you want to be not yeah, associated no, with the company. Fine. Okay, yeah, just for the attendance tracker. Thank you. Um, Slinky, you there? Francesco? Yeah. Hello. Just making sure you're there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Who else? Christian. Hey, Doug. Hello. I feel like I haven't been here for a while. Yeah. Welcome back then. Thank you. Uh, Timor. Tim Timor? T T I H O R. M I R, yeah. It, yeah, okay. This isn't your, you've been here before, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, wow, we're getting a whole bunch of new people today. All right. N G I R A L D O. I know that person's been here before. I can't remember the, the real name, though. Yeah, that's me. It's Nick. Nick. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I need to change my screen name. Not a problem. All right. Uh, Sergey, are you there? Yep. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, let's see who else. Mona, are you there? Hi. Hello. I think this is your first time on the call, right? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, that's correct. So okay. I attended a couple of meetings of uh, serverless workflow, and right now I'm um, my first time uh, in serverless. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, welcome. Can you do me a favor? And if you want to be associated with the company, just for the attendance tracker, can you write the name of your company inside the Zoom chat? Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't want to be um, associated with my company, so just okay. myself. <laughs> that, that works too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let's see. Do -do. I feel like I'm missing somebody here. Um, okay. Mike, are you there? Yep. Just joined. Hello. Uh, Mark. Morning. Morning. Mark, you there? Doug. Mark. Oh, Good. Um, Mr. Klaus, you there? Yes, I'm you. Excellent. Uh, Scott, you there? No, no, no. Uh, Thomas, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good. Welcome. Oop. Thank you. Things, things keep jumping around on me. Hold on a minute. No, I'm miss. I'm no, I'm misspelling your name. Hold on a minute. W e n g a r t n e r. There we go. And which company are you with? Roche Diagnostics. Okay. Do me a favor. I'm gonna. Is it R O S R O C H? Yes, it is. Okay. And with an E at the CH after oh, the CH. I was so, so close. <laughs> yeah. All right. John, welcome. Good morning. All right. Let's see. Vinay, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello. I was uh, there last week as well, but uh, I was on the mobile, and for some reason I couldn't unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll mark you. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> no, not a problem. Okay, let's see. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. Ginger, are you there? Hi, I'm Doug. Good morning. Hey, you got a funky little icon today. I like it. Yeah, we uh, got a corporate Zoom account, and so that's our main company, Synadia, and I just forgot to log out of that account, so. <laughs> okay, cool, just noticed it. All right, uh, Hamid, are you there? Hamid? Yes. Asadi? Hello. 
Hello. Do me a favor. This is, might be your first time, first time on the call, right? Yes. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Just paste. Uh, if you want to be associated with a company, just for the attendance tracker, um, if you can place your company name into the chat, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Um, all right. We'll get started in a sec. Let me make sure I got it right. There's a DI on the call. Who is that? Yeah, that's me. Me as in? Yeah, Dustin Ingram. Wait, say that again? Oh, Dustin. Oh, okay. And while you're in there, you want to add your company name? Oh, there you go. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Let's see if I got everybody. Did I miss anybody? Vlad, you there? Okay, we'll get Vlad later. All right, let's go ahead and get started since it's throughout. The oh, there you go, Vlad. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll get started. We'll catch up with that stuff later. All right. Um, AIs. So just let you guys know, uh, we are working on a, not a SIG app platform charter. We are doing a SIG serverless charter. We decided to bite the bullet and go ahead and do it. Uh, that will give a proper home to hopefully cloud events, the workflow spec, and the two new specs that we're working on. Um, it's not approved. I haven't even gone to the TOC yet. I'm still waiting for a couple of internal reviews um, from Mark and Ken, but that's the path we're currently on. Um, I will probably make that document available to you guys um, probably in a couple of days once I get uh, those reviews done. I just want to make sure it's not uh, horrible before I show you guys. But anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know that's the path we're on. Uh, community time. So anything from the community people want to talk about this on the agenda? Well, for the for that SIG serverless charter, can you give us the outline of the scope you expect there? Uh, yeah, basically, um, <laughs> it was actually really difficult because they have a SIG runtime, and then there's another SIG that kind of overlaps with it. So there's another one that there's another SIG that, that seems really really close to us. What I you did mean is app I, delivery. Yeah, that's it. App delivery. Thank you. What I tried to do was to write it up to talk about more of a developer experience kind of SIG because I was thinking about what serverless meant to a lot of people. And when you look at it from a technology perspective, it overlaps with, the, with a ton of other stuff, right? The other SIGs in particular. But what those other SIGs I don't think are necessarily focused on is how to make the developer's life easier. Because to a lot of people, that's what serverless is really about in some ways, right? Yeah, there's some features like scale to zero and stuff like that. But a lot of it is making the developer go back to being a developer as opposed to an infrastructure um, IT expert. Right. So I try to write it up from that perspective to try to differentiate us a little. However, having said that, I did add a paragraph in there that says, realistically, there's probably going to be some overlap with other SIGs. And so we're going to have to, to work with the other SIGs on a case by case basis to see which project really belongs under which SIG. So it's going to be a little bit of give and take. That's the current wording anyway. Doug, I have a okay. quick question. Sorry, you mentioned overlap. Uh, can you talk about, give an example of what projects you see they might be overlapped with? Like well, let's say, <laughs> let's say in the future, some project like say um, uh, Knative. I know it's not hitting here now, but let's just use that as an example so everybody knows it. Um, let's say Knative decides to try to join the CNCF, right? Is, is that something that should go into a runtime? App platform or serverless? I think you can make an argument for any of those three. Yep. I, right? You're right. You're right. Yep. Yeah. And in my my mind, I would put that towards our our SIG mainly because while while Knative uh, obviously is a bit of an infrastructure kind of platform, its main focus is to make life easier for the developer by trying to, as best it can, reuse underlying technology and just simplify it for the users. Even though it does introduce some, some of its own features, that's not its main point in my mind. So that, that's, that's my current thinking anyway. No, that's fair, thank you. Yep, okay. All right, uh, any other questions about the SIG charter or the community time? All right, moving forward. Um, I don't see Kathy on the call, but, but Timur, I see you're on the call. Did, did you want to bring everybody up to date on anything that might happen within the SIG workflow? I'm not, sorry, the workflow subgroup? Oh, wait, did we lose him? I guess we lost him. Okay, never mind. Hello? Um, oh, yep, there you go. You want to uh, uh, any update? I keep getting dropped from my phone, so I just have to switch to my laptop. My bad. Okay. 
Uh, regarding, are you guys asking about the workflow subgroup? Yeah, yeah. any status you want to give. Yeah, sorry, I was, <laughs> first of all, you can probably change this Kathy to my name if you want to, I'll be doing the updates probably okay. I'll start joining on a weekly basis whenever you feel like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're doing a couple of things. Uh, currently, there's a TOC proposal as, as you guys mentioned. Uh, so we're kind of waiting on the decision and, 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 and having a serverless SIG, I guess, definitely will help with that. So that's one thing that we're kind of hoping this will happen. I don't know if anybody might have a time frame for us as far as when or how. I don't, I don't know if anybody's on a call that, ha that knows know or might know. Uh, the second thing we're working, uh, our meeting weekly, uh, discussing the workflow, workflow primer, the specification primer. So that's going on. That's a big issue, a big thing going on. And the third thing is we're working on uh, our first version 0 0.1. So we're updating all the, all the documents and, and setting up the Git branches and everything for, for the first version. Um, so those are kind of like the three big things that are going on with serverless workflow right now. And, and also just wanted to mention, I wanted to thank the community. We've been, just like in this meeting, we've been having a lot um, more people starting to join and, and starting to get interest on, 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 on during meetings. So that's a, that's a big thing. Cool, thank you. Any questions? All right, cool. Moving forward then into the PRs. Um, Okay, why is this one? I thought we resolved this one, didn't we? Hold on, I apologize. Yeah, we already resolved this one. I'm not sure why that one's on there. Okay, uh, Mike, anything you wanna mention relative to your pull request? Yeah, so I, um, I updated all of the, or I resolved all of the comments and uh, went through uh, merge hell and rebase hell last night, but I think it, I think it's readable. Um, so uh, there's a couple of things that uh, came out in particular, um, the idea of expanding available source, uh, CE source attributes that might be available. Um, I got a lot of feedback uh, through different channels that that wasn't necessarily doable for some implementers. So I think we should probably debate that a little bit further before we decide to put that in. Um, as well as uh, so took out the source structure um, because we didn't have a template for that to be read like we didn't have a way for that to be interpretable uh, by by a machine so uh, that's something that needs a little bit more thought um, one you know I, I think this is fine for like an RCO one um, what I would plan to do is immediately send another pull request for an RCO two that uh, puts this more in a uh, rest uh, structure. Um, so thinking about a hierarchy of resources, um, so I've got looking at them right now on my desk, I drew it out on paper last night just to type it up. Um, I think it, it makes it a little more palatable. Um, the other thing is that I, I don't know if people saw in Slack, but I put out, uh, I think Jem suggested last week, uh, GraphQL. Uh, so I went and learned GraphQL and implemented this as a GraphQL API. I think it's actually probably slightly more elegant, um, but that's more of a question for the group of how do we feel about pushing a GraphQL API. Um, so I'll stop talking and let other people, you know, say some things. Okay, any questions for Mike? I don't actually see any outstanding comments on the doc either, which is cool. Okay, so just a quick discussion point about process, because uh, since you mentioned uh, RC2, um, the way we've been working in the past for cloud events is the next version is typically labeled as just RCN or whatever, even long before we even think about officially releasing it or publishing it or anything like that. So if we accept this pull request, any additional pull request made to this document would still be under the banner of RC1 because it's not actually released for anything yet. The first, okay. of, so we don't, don't need to worry about RC2 or anything like that. Um, it's not until we get to an official zero one uh, uh, release type of vote that we need to worry about changing the version number. Yeah. Right. So, any other any questions, comments from Mike? This okay. is Thomas speaking. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, I would actually vote for GraphQL uh, interface possibilities for cloud events. This is this right? 
So we, we discussed it in, in our group as well in our company. And uh, from a consumer point of view, that would be great if we could support GraphQL as well. Okay, cool, thank you. And I, I do think if we do that, it needs to be for both discovery and for subscriptions. Like you would expect that uh, you'd be able to query your subscriptions in the same GraphQL uh, root document and that you'd be able to uh, add subscriptions via mutation. I would expect so, yes. Yeah, okay. consistency is always good, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know Clemens is out this week, right? So he's not here to weigh in on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so again, so from a bit of a process perspective, um, obviously, I'm assuming we're going to accept the P, this pull request. So once we do, I would I would hope that people would now either open up issues or pull re pull requests against this document. And so, for example, the GraphQL discussion, I would I would actually think we'd probably st want to start that as an issue. So maybe Mike or or Thomas, either one of you guys want to open up an issue to start mm -hmm. to force that discussion. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll open one up since I have the prototype already. Yep. Cool. Okay. And if pe people didn't see it, discovery dot uh, in the cloud dot dev with dashes between in and the and uh, the on cloud. Yeah, you put that in here someplace, didn't you? Do, do, do. I can put it in the notes doc. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, from a process perspective, last week we talked about giving people another week um, till today to look it over, see if there's any earth-shattering reason why we should not merge this as the first rough draft of the spec. Um, are there any objections or concerns with doing so? Okay, cool. So we will now make that the official first draft. So I'll accept it. So approved. Okay, so now as Mike mentioned, and thank you, Mike, for all the work on that. I appreciate it. Um, as Mike mentioned, Clemens is actually out sick this week. I don't believe it's the virus or anything like that. So that's good but he did get a recommendation to take it easy. So he didn't get a chance to address um, any of the concerns that were raised as, as issues here. So ignoring the outstanding comments in there, let me ask a broader question. Has anybody looked at this and have any concerns uh, with accepting this, assuming Clemens does address what I consider to be mainly typographical type changes? Okay. What I'd like to do is, is propose that we conditionally accept this as the first rough draft contingent upon when Clemens feels up to it, addressing all the comments in here and then merging it. The reason I don't wanna merge it now is because I don't wanna run the risk of losing people's comments in here. Because once you close the PR, sometimes people tend to forget about it and, and move on. Whereas if you leave it open, it's a nagging reminder for them. So are people okay with leaving it open until Clemens can address the comments? Um, and if there's a comment that he doesn't address the way the person suggested it, then we can open up an issue and track it that way. But I, I just didn't want to lose the, the existing ones that I thought were relatively minor. Any objection to a conditional approval? Okay, no cool. Thank you, everybody. All right, next. So we talked briefly about this last week, but the changes were made uh, too soon for us to approve it. So just to refresh your memory, there was a little bit of a question about how a receiver should know whether a binary message is actually a cloud event or not. So what I did is I went through and modified all of the transport bindings to basically add text that says, if the four required properties actually appear in the message, then you can make a good educated guess that it's probably a cloud event. So you can go ahead and try to parse it, um, but there's no guarantee that it actually still is a cloud event because people could choose to you know, add our, our headers randomly anyway. Um, nothing normative in this text, it's just additional guidance for people to try to make a guess as to whether they should even try to parse it as a cloud event when it's in the binary format. I believe this applied to all transports except for NATs, um, but basically the language is pretty much what you see here for every single transfer binding, except I made it specific. So for example, some are called properties, some are called headers, minor differences like that, but basically it's the same thing. Any questions on that? No, that's good. Okay, cool, thank you. Any objections to approving? All right, thank you. Um, all right, now this one, 
is something that Jem put in there. Actually, how long did he put in there? Okay, technically it's it's too soon. However, let me view it this way. What I'd like to do is, since this is completely non-normative and it's just sort of editorial type text, what he did is he added this section right here. I'll give you guys a chance to read that. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or concern with this text or think that it needs to be tweaked in any way? Perhaps we should also mention Kafka uh, binding because HTTP one and the Kafka one, they differ in a few ways. Um, and when I was trying to implement a custom um, protocol for cloud events in Liclus, uh, I was, so I started with HTTP, but had to switch to Kafka because of some differences. Okay. Um, can you do me a favor then? Can you make that comment in his pull request so that way he can make the edit and then we can approve it next week? Sure, I will. Excellent. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. So I won't push to conditionally approve it since we have an outstanding request, which is fine. All right. Thank you for the review. Um, hold on a minute. Can't type. All right, Clemens still has an A on that, so nothing to talk about there. So before we start talking about these three work in project, work in progress proposals, <clears throat> are there any other topics people would like to bring up just before we get to stuff that isn't impossible to be approved or anything? I just wanna make sure we don't uh, lose any possible topics. So okay. Doug, I had a, uh, maybe a comment here. So, and sorry, uh, like this is my fourth meeting uh, i was wondering if does it make sense to have a master document that pulls and shows the relationships between a lot of these efforts to give a little bit more context so that we can appropriately uh, dig deeper does that make sense so you mean an overall document that ties together the three specs that we're working on yeah all the efforts and the the motivation and uh, and and a lot of the uh, uh, providing a little bit more context and then so it helps people who are new to r really come in get context and start contributing uh, a lot faster unless there's something to that effect already no I, no i don't think there is because pretty much up until recently everybody everything has been focused on just the cloud event spec. So having something that spans all three, from my point of view, is a, is a, is a great idea. Uh, we just haven't done it yet. Okay, um, uh, you know, I'm happy to start uh, putting something together, if that makes sense. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask if you wanted to volunteer. That'd be yeah. wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Given that, you know, I'm a relative, you know, I've been only here for the last four meetings. I'm happy to go through and start putting, putting something together. That'd, that'd be great, thank you. Um, awesome. Yeah, actually, I, I should probably write this down, but I have an action item to at some point look at restructuring of our directories because everything obviously is very much focused on cloud events right now. And it makes more sense if we're going to have three different specs. Each spec might have its own primer or ancillary documentation and a single flat directory structure isn't going to be as nice for people. So moving stuff around into subfolders would be good. And then having this document that you're proposing at that top level makes perfect yeah. sense to help explain it. So it all goes together. So, yep. It makes sense to me. Okay, any questions on that or comments? I assume no one's gonna object to more documentation for people, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Um, all right, Francesco, I believe these three are yours. Is there any particular order you'd like to talk about them? Um, not really. Uh, I mean, those are three different alternatives to start looking into the problem of creating a more efficient uh, way binding to, to send multiple events in the, in the same HTTP envelope. Okay. Would you like to talk about this first one, which is the structured one? So, uh, the first two one, a multi-part structured and multi-part binary, uh, they leverage the, the multi-part uh, um, content type from RFC to zero, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, scroll down, scroll down. So. From, uh, yeah, from the two zero four six. So, <clears throat> 
in the first one, uh, we just send events uh, serialized in uh, one or different uh, um, um, event formats. So this could be JSON, could be Avro, could be whatever format. And every event is put inside a single ch um, part of the multi-part envelope. So we can send multiple events and we can also optionally give a name to them. And that's the first idea. The second idea is to create a custom uh, multi-part uh, um, a custom multi-part multi content type, which is always based on RFC 2046. And is that this one? Is that, is that the binary one? Yeah, and it's technically valid. Okay. Um, and, and, and the difference is that this one uh, basically send events uh, like, 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 like the binary mode that now we have, with the difference that send one event, one event per part of the multipart. So it works the same way, just, um, just it, it, it leverages the, the headers of uh, each single part. Did anybody have any questions? Okay, I, I had one. Uh, yeah. Go yeah, ahead, I have one as well. Go ahead, Mike. Um, have, you, have you thought about how authorization uh, will work? So um, I think authorization and authentication, uh, those can just leave in, in the headers on top of the request. So given, I mean, the, the, the assumption is that when you start receiving um, multi-part uh, cloud events, you can receive them. So the, on top, uh, on, the, on the address on top of the request, so the address that, the global address to the whole request should contain authorization and authentication address. Okay. And that's meant to cover the entire stream. Sorry? And it's meant, it's to, meant cover to cover the entire stream. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hold on, I'm just taking some notes here. So uh, the, the, um, I've started looking at implementation, and if you want, if you want next week, I can provide an implementation for all these three different uh, proposals. Uh, the, in my opinion, the multi-part binary is the one where we could gain most. Problem is that uh, most of HTTP implementations out there um, does the assumption that the only multi-part that you send on HTTP is a multi-part form data. And the multi-part form data doesn't allow uh, custom headers. So like, for example, those headers, uh, CS back version, CA type, uh, some HTTP implementation could decide to strip them out. Uh, that means that we need to investigate uh, how easy it is to actually implement, it, uh, implement this. Like I, I've saw that, for example, in Go, it's, it's, it's quite simple to do, but I, need, I, I still need to, to do a, a better research. While the first one, the multi-part structure, uh, follows the um, RFC, I don't remember the name, but if you look on top, you see it. RFC, uh, go, go, on top, on top, stop, stop. Um, this one? Yeah, the RFC 7578, and it, it is the RFC of multi-part from data. The, uh, the con of this, uh, this of the multi-part structured proposal is that uh, because we send the using multi-part form data content type, it, it's hard for um, an implementation to understand if inside each part you have, it, it, if the HTTP envelope contains or not cloud events. So I think that, that touches on the question I was gonna ask was, I, it wasn't clear to me why you have to separate these two out. I mean, so for example, on this one for binary, why couldn't each individual one be binary or structured, you know, based upon how it gets formatted in here? It's not a bad idea. Yeah, we can do that. And that's, that's something that, well, at some point when I was writing that, uh, I was like, oh yeah, maybe you can do that. <laughs> so yeah, that could work, definitely. Okay. The problem is we need, to, we need to do some investigation of how simple it is to implement multi-part. 
Yeah, because I think I think one of the reasons we avoided in the past, and to be honest, and correct me for anybody else who's been here a long time, I think we avoided it because um, <laughs> it's going to sound funny. But at one point when it came up as part of the discussion, I, I had this vague recollection of Clemens saying, multi-part is hard. And for some reason, that's all I remember about it. <laughs> well, multi-part, uh, multi-part form data, it's not hard because every HTTP implementation has it. Right. Multi-part itself, uh, it's different because not, not every HTTP implementation can implement a full multi-part. Some of them just implement a multi-part form data. So, right. so again, it, this, this requires some investigation. Yeah. But yeah, if you are interested, I can, I can go forward and try to create some prototypes of implementation, check how it works, and we can go forward. I mean, for now, uh, the, the, these proposals are really just draft. They, right. they don't explain more or less anything. So they need to be worked out. But I, I, I want to understand if there's an interest in going forward. Yeah. So, uh, Christoph, your hands up. Yeah, um, it's also what I wrote on the original ticket. So the concern here is efficiency, but from my point of view, the main goal should be interoperability. And so what for me follows is that simplicity and aspect that's easy to implement are for me the primary goals. And sure, if we can also reach efficiency, that's good. But if we like do some things that are clearly more efficient, I'm not questioning that, but that make the HTTP spec harder to implement. I'm wondering whether that is really a good idea and worth it. So for me, I'm more leaning towards the side we should keep it simple so that people can easily implement the HTTP spec. And then we have the other formats that are clearly more efficient. And then you can use those if you want something more efficient. That, that, that leads me to, to another point. Uh, does it make sense to have these together with the batch that we now have in HTTP binding in another sub spec, which include like an, an HTTP uh, binding for multiple events? Because now we have the HTTP binding that supports, that has binary structure and batch, but like good part of the uh, SDKs that we have now doesn't support batch. For SDK Go, the main one doesn't support batch. So maybe it makes sense to, to have those in a different uh, by HTTP binding, which we can call like uh, HTTP binding multiple events uh, for multiple events. And we can put the batch and then we can put the multi-part. We can put even the JSON streaming, which is the other proposal. Uh, Sergey, your hands up. Yeah, um, I have a quick question. Since HTTP2 is already a mature spec and you're soon going to have HTTP3, uh, what if we focus on uh, HTTP2 HTTP transport for cloud events where, uh, for example, headers are packed into binary form uh, and you know have to resend this uh, SE spec version, SE type and so on and so forth. Yeah, I, I... But also, um, Oh, sorry, we can I... reuse the stream uh, in HTTP 2, unlike in HTTP 1.1. Mm -hmm. um, no, so uh, for, for, the, for the thing that you wrote on, in the comment, uh, I agree with you. I think it's a good idea. And, and for the streams, yes, that, that should, that I still need to dig into this. So, but for, for the part of, about the errors, I think it's a good idea and honestly, I think it's even better to just say, um, uh, to, 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 to don't send the HPAC kind of header you wrote in the comment, but just to define from the spec, so. Mm -hmm. So I have a question for Christoph. Um, based upon your comment, you were suggesting that we, we try to keep it simple. Um, but given that we already have batch in the HTTP spec, I'm wondering whether you think adding this type of batch is really more complicated or are you actually suggesting that we may have made a mistake in even adding batch to begin with? 
I'm not suggesting we remove it. I'm just trying to understand because it seems odd to be added a batch at all, and yet now trying to add a, a, a form of batch that some people are probably already familiar with, which is you know using a multi-part uh, is I, um, less confusing for people. If I'm not mistaken, we only have batch in JSON, but not in HTTP itself. Uh, check if I'm if I'm I'm not mistaken. I see we it. Uh, we have in HTTP. Yeah, I see it in HTTP. Let me, let me bring it up. Hold on a second here. Do, do, okay. Do. Oh, not that one. Let's do this. Yeah, see, this is the HTTP protocol spec, so it is in there. We have batch right here. All right. Okay. Well, it basically says, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Well, it basically says the uh, event format implements the details. Otherwise, you just know it's a batch. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, okay. I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you're right. But um, is this only defining it for JSON? So JSON is the only format that has it, but if like Avro or whatever would implement it, then that would also. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. Be, yeah, but this sense, this is just a JSON array. Exactly. So every other format could also just send an array or yeah. whatever they have. Okay. So, okay. I get, I get, so my next question is actually I mean, is for, yeah. yeah, no, go ahead, go, go for it. I mean, your your question was um, was it a mistake to edit? Um, <laughs> so here, uh, this one, I think the batch mode itself is optional. So yeah, I think that that's also one of the points uh, Francesco just made is maybe we should have multiple specs where we say one is the one that everyone has to support, and here's all the fun stuff you can do. But probably you know we don't know how widely it is implemented and so on. Yeah. So that, that is one way we could go. Yeah. I think we consciously didn't make the batch content modes uh, mandatory. So that's optional. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. Well, okay. But the uh, question is like adding so much optional stuff and then you don't really know how much people implemented and so on. Um, I also don't know what's the value of that, app, to be honest. Yeah. So, uh, my my use my personal my personal use case for sending multiple events in the same envelope is to invoke functions that takes cloud events. So that's my uh, use case. That's what I want to cover. Uh, so they they do what they expose it. Or? Sorry. What do the functions do? I didn't get it. Sorry. No. Uh, a function that takes multiple events as input and can potentially output multiple events as output. Those kind of functions to be invoked through HTTP needs to have multiple events in the same envelope, basically. Um, but is your function depending on getting multiple events in the same request? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I, I think that is conceptually something that we can maybe implement with HTTP, but we won't have with any of the other transport formats. So you're building a function that can only work with HTTP because if you look at all other transports, the grouping or the batching of events is more or less random. So you just, you know, it's more an optimization at transport level, or I need to send you, I don't know, 50 events let me batch them in groups of 10 and then I'm sending you 10 and then there is no semantical meaning to one batch. But for you, your use case, it sounds like there is a semantic meaning and several events belong together. Yeah, it's almost like that is nested. something, sorry? I, I was gonna say it's almost like a nested cloud event like I think Klaus suggested at one point. It, exactly, so, and I think for that use case, I would, to keep the interoperability and to make sure all transports can support the same thing. I would really like to keep this use case out of the spec because there's no way we can implement that with the other specs on this batching level. We really need to have a different terminology for this kind of thing like grouping or nesting 
or whatever. It's like a valid use case. I'm not questioning that, but it's different from batching, which is purely a performance optimization, if that makes sense. Ryan, your hands up. Yeah, I'll, I'll just echo that. I'll, I'll give you a concrete use case and uh, apologies, I just joined. So uh, uh, if this has been already discussed, just let me know. Um, uh, at Twilio, um, uh, we allow customers to set up a webhook for every um, state transition of you know, a phone call or a message or whatever happens within their account. Um, and a lot of customers um, want us to batch those because they basically don't want us to deny all service their web server. Um, and so batching is definitely a, a, a use case that we need and we're going to um, uh, uh, implement regardless of whether it's in the spec. Um, uh, I'm not arguing that it should be in the spec and maybe, maybe there's an argument for it to be in the, maybe the HTTP binding specific part of the spec, um, but it is definitely a valid use case for us. Yep. So let me ask a question of Scott in particular, since, uh, since the Go SDK was mentioned. Have you guys not implemented this on the Go SDK side of things just because you haven't gone to it or was there a technical challenge that you saw? Well, if you, if you look at the, the current Go SDK, it's written assuming that there's one event in and out. And so the, the thinking was always, if we would like to keep that simple fast scenario, uh, you, we would have to explode out the batch on, on delivery if we get a batch of, of events. And the where I got stuck was I wasn't sure what to do mid mid processing that batch if I got an error or a response. I I, I suppose that for the specific case of SDK Go, uh, we will need a complete separate API to handle this. But I think it's the same for every SDK. Because all SDKs now does the assumption one one. Yeah, I, I think that that's probably the right answer, and it's it's unfortunate because it, it really uh, complicates the API at the client level. But I I don't think that the there's any reasonable way for the SDK to choose what the um, what the processing semantics should be for batch for errors midstream. I suppose it's something that should be done like at the binding level. Like, I mean, you as a user, you know that you are going to receive a batch. So you prepare for that. Doesn't right. But the sense trouble sense. is like, you, you could just be a function that wants to consume a single event and no, no, no. The, the, like everything that is in the SDK go now should not be aware of batching. It should be like some two or three different APIs that just works with batching. Well, that, that, that's the trouble is if you receive an error on event 10 of 100, what do you do? Do you, do you like, do you save that error and return it at the end of delivering all 100 events or do you wait until, I, I, I just don't, I don't know and it's not defined in the spec. So I didn't know how to implement it in the, in the in the like FAS case, and I yeah. So, so at this point, I suppose does it make sense to give a semantic meaning, and the answer like from Christoph is no, or does it make sense to give to don't give them a semantic meaning and treat them as a as a string? Because I think that's the point. Scott, does the go <clears throat> excuse me? Does the Go SDK have the notion of just returning a two hundred two immediately? And that way you don't have to worry about what this what to send back on errors. Um well, so we have implemented a programming model where incoming requests are, are basically blocking until something somewhere acknowledges it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's synchronous in delivery. Something has to say, like, I'm I'm good, I got this, I'm done. I guess what that, what that thing does, whether it's stored in a queue for processing later or processes it fully right now, is, is an implementation choice then, I guess. That's, yeah. that's right. You could choose yeah. to do whatever you want. But yeah. the, the trouble is like, I can't really force someone to, to batch up the, or uh, you know, uh, buffer up the batch and say, I, cool, I got it, uh, ack it on the upstream. Yeah. 
So it's, it was a tricky problem and I still don't know how to solve it correctly. And I, I really, I think the only solution if this is really a, something that we need to support is uh, the, the API has to also allow you to say like, I also would like to receive batches of things and I would like to send batches of things, which is independent of sending, sending single events. And then that becomes very tricky because the uh, the integrating with other um, like AMQP or PubSub or uh, other things that allow batching like Kafka, you have to treat that protocol uh, differently too. So, so it, it might make me. sense. Uh, Sorry, uh, is somebody talking? Hey, yeah, it's Dan. Um, this is my first call, so kind of apologies if I make any mistakes or assumptions, but do, do all of the protocols support batching or is it only a subset? Well, so there's, there's a workaround in the SDK, or sorry, in the specification that means uh, anything that supports JSON structured mode can support batched mode, meaning uh, you can always send an array of cloud events. It's not very efficient for, for mm -hmm. things that don't natively support uh, batched content like Kafka. Uh, what uh, what Kerslinky is trying to propose is uh, the stream of of events on um, on HTTP so that we don't have to do JSON marshaling and produce this uh, uh, JSON array, which is very inefficient processing. Also, JSON streaming proposal is goes in that direction exactly because. It's um... Francesco, did we lose you? Oh, or was that someone else talking? Was that yeah. Dan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the JSON streaming proposal goes in the direction of uh, avoiding a full parsing and just implementing it easily with JSON. Okay, but well, let's talk about that one in a sec. But first, Christoph, your hands up. Do you want to say something? Uh, one, two. May I ask uh, back to Scott's earlier comment on uh, um, yeah, processing a batch. So I think if you look at other protocols like uh, Kafka or PubSub or whatever, if you send a batch of events, you basically get this, what Doc said is 202 response, which is, okay, you, I don't know, you sent me 10 messages or events, I got them, that's it. That's all I'm, I'm saying. I got them. And then afterwards, they're getting or to the consumer and then they're being processed. And if an error happens there and that, that's not anymore for the producer to worry about or even know about. So I'm, um, I, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not really talking, yeah, sorry. I'm not talking about the producer needs to worry about this. I'm talking about what, what is, so if the SDK is acting on behalf of middleware, so it's, it's not the producer, it's, it's maybe it's some other thing that's taken a batch off Kafka and is trying to deliver it as a batch over HTTP. That consumer is gonna take in that, that whole array and what is the processing story for, for that situation? And it became very unclear. Uh, so, sorry, okay, maybe I don't follow. Right, like it, the, it's different for a producer to send to a broker that has persistence because you get that 202 because it says, cool, I saved it, but it didn't really do any processing. On the other right. side, on the consumer side, the SDK is hosting on an HTTP port. You get in this block of JSON, uh, JSON that's uh, 10 events, and that connection is going to stay open until the consumer says, I've stored it, right? Like you don't want to lose messages because it's either going to act or NACA upstream and a, an ACK means I'm gonna move the index or I'm gonna drop the events or I'm gonna erase it from disk. So there's, there's more at stake on HTTP because it doesn't have that centralized broker that's gonna stream things out for you. That's true, yeah. So what you're saying is I need to keep the HTTP connection open until I'm sure I process all of the events, whatever process means. So that there, at least, so I, or another way around, I can guarantee at least once processing semantics. 
right? That's right. And then, so w where I don't know what to do is if you, if you're processing that batch of some number and there's an error in the middle. Yeah. I think that's a choice on the application developer that wants to integrate, right? Like if you're using Kafka directly, you would, you would know where to in, move the index to, and then you'd get a redelivery event. So you could act some and knack some. Yeah. Yeah, I Ryan has his hand. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, Ryan, you're up. Yeah, I got it, thanks. Yeah, I, I guess I, I question whether, um, and I don't have a strong opinion here yet, but I, I question whether we wanna prescribe delivery semantics in this spec, because a lot of that's gonna be technology and implementation dependent. Um, and even within the technologies that do support, you know, at least once delivery like Kafka, yeah, you know, there's still like Kafka, the Kafka cluster can be configured in lots of different ways with how those, how that, how, how the, uh, how the persistence works, right? Like there's a TTL on a, a per top topic TTL that is a fully application and implement, implementation dependent. So I, I guess I worry a little bit about like, it, it can get a little bit messy uh, if we're prescribing um, uh, semantics that are, technology and application dependent in you know the broader spec which is actually the reason why we haven't touched it <laughs> right we, we, <laughs> we just we just talked about the format that's that's pretty much it we try to stay as far away from uh, the semantics or the processing model i should say as, as possible but uh, john your, your hands up next yeah i was i was going to channel clouds basically saying the same thing right for people who are new this this is like a, a a topic that comes back and forth every so often because of this semantic issue, right? And people bring different semantic assumptions based on their use cases or their tooling and trying to harmonize this across all these different use cases is, is, uh, is seriously quicksand. Yeah. And I, I will point out that both of the proposals that we've seen so far, um, from Francesco, do not get into semantic processing. His 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 follows the same pattern that the rest of our or, or the rest of cloud events does, which is just defines the format, which is you know obviously leads into the question that Scott's asked. You know, what do you do with errors and stuff like that? But at least he didn't try to tackle those, which he probably shouldn't have because we didn't do it for cloud events in general. So he's at least consistent from well, that perspective. Right, but there's still these implicit assumptions. Right or the assumptions behind, well, why do I need this? You know, it's not just efficiency. There is there there are implicit semantic processing assumptions. Right, like he 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 directly mentioned, this comes as a group and has meaning as a group. Right, that that is an, an, an a direct uh, assumption. That's interesting because yeah. He, so Francesco, did you mean to imply that if you do batching like this in this binary way that there's a meaning between them or was, was your application just assuming that? My application is assuming that, but that, I mean, this, this kind of proposal uh, works also for um, having an infinite stream. Of, of events not related between each other. I, I assume in, in, the, in, in, the, in my case, it's, it's an assumption of my application. Right. But yeah, I, I think, I think all, all people raise their good points about the semantic of, yes. of batching too. So we're, we're, we have eight minutes left and I'd want you to very at least quickly talk about your JSON streaming one and then we'll talk even faster about what to do next with all three. So you want to quickly summarize this one? Uh, JSON streaming is really, um, it's the same as batch with the difference that uh, you don't have to wrap inside an array, uh, but you uh, divide event using a, a, a line feed and, a, and I don't remember the name of the other chapter, LS. Anyway, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a well-defined spec by an RFC, or oh, there an RFC, I don't remember what's the name. If you go on top, you see it. Yeah, RFC 7464. And this, in this RFC, uh, it explains that you can actually send an infinite stream of JSON, just sending them uh, divided by these two chapters. Okay. Any high-level questions on this? 
Okay, so you talked about possibly going off and implementing these things. Um, uh, obviously, you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, personally, I would rather, if I was in your position, I would wait at least a week because since we just presented these on the call today, I would wait until next week to give people a chance to look at these, think about it, and see what their reaction is next week. Because next week, you know, in general, people might come back and say, I love the idea or we hate the idea. And I wouldn't want you going off and coding something that everybody hates, right? Um, so if I were you, I'd, I'd wait at least a week and I'll, we'll keep put these on the agenda for next week as well to see if people have any more comments and then we'll try to figure out the next steps there. Because like I said, I don't want you to do work that, that may be throwaway, but obviously it's up to you. Okay, no problem. Does anybody else have any comments about all three of these? Because they're all kind of related to this notion of batching in some way or another, uh, sort of. I mean, I guess streaming isn't quite batching, but it's close. Anybody have any high level comments, questions about or, or concerns? I mean, does this seem like something we should consider going forward? And it maybe it's more of a position or more, it's more of a question of how we position it in the specifications. Like for example, do we, do we include it as a separate spec? That way it's more clear that it's optional and not part of what we consider like core. Whereas if it was part of the HTTP spec, it may not be quite as clear that it's optional and people may think they have to do it. You know, is it that, is it that kind of thing? Or does anybody have any thoughts about whether the idea is good or bad in general? Uh, when, when I saw the pull request uh, and then I saw the first time that batching is uh, mentioned at all for cloud events, uh, I wasn't expecting that when I read the specification at the first time. So I was really wondering, does it really make sense to have batching for small amount of data for, for cloud events at all? I mean, if someone wants to go out and, and implement it for themselves, but referring it uh, from the specification, I'm really wondering whether this makes sense or not. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Uh, your hands up, Scott. I, I prefer this over trying to make JSON arrays. <clears throat> and that's because it uses sort of a, a standard multi-part type stuff, or, you know, something at the transport level. Yeah, plus like you, um, you could do outbound streaming if you have a, a very big list of events you want to stream out that maybe doesn't fit in uh, a normal size buffer, like think IoT cases. You could stream out a uh, single processed events at a time on the wire and you wouldn't have to uh, produce that giant uh, list of all of the events that you're going to stream. Okay. And yeah. from a performance standpoint, parsing, parsing giant arrays of JSON is, is a lot less efficient than small 64K max chunks. Yeah. So you guys are both saying you prefer this third JSON streaming one over the other two? <laughs> yes. Okay. Sorry, I had a, I had a comment. The other, okay, this one ahead. only works for, uh, what would this look like in binary mode? Sorry? Hmm. Well, I was like wondering. One of, the, one of the proposals had a, an option so that you could do multi-part streaming with binary mode, right? I think that there aren't three proposals. There's there's two on the table. There's a multi-part for binary and there's a multi-part for JSON. Well, there's multi-part. Oh, well, no, the multi-part uh, structured, in my opinion, can be joined with the multi-part binary. I mean, they can be joined in my opinion. And so these two are almost the same. They are not the same. The thing is that they can be joined because uh, as, as soon as you know that you are in a multi-part cloud, uh, cloud event, uh, for every part you can you can send an event or a structured or binary. I mean, the, right. because you can um, can you can check whether of the two encoding you are using. Right. That that answer your question. That would be awesome because then you you can receive uh, events encoded in whatever way on HTTP and bridge them to the, the next phase without having to decode and encode them in a different uh, encoding. Yeah. Okay, so we're almost out of time. Any last minute questions? I think the homework assignment for everybody is to look at the proposals 
and give some thought to what we want to do in terms of next steps, whether we want to even head down this path at all or say, no, we don't want to open up this route hole again. Um, but it'd be nice if we can give uh, Francesco some sort of some sort of decision by next week so we don't you know, keep him lingering. Um, anyway. Can we grab this um, um, pull request onto the uh, uh, doc so that uh, everybody knows the the, the, the pull request uh, link? You mean here? Yes, yes, or somewhere. Yeah, yeah well, it, it, I'm gonna put it on the agenda for next week as well, so it, it's okay. still there, yeah. Got it, thank you. Okay, all right, thank you, Francesco. Any other topics for this week's call? All right, within the last minute, did I miss anybody on the agenda I mean, for the attendee list? I think I got Yes, it right. I came late, sorry. Oh, Christoph, sorry. All right, anybody else? All right, cool. Thank you, everybody, and good call. We'll talk again next week. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. Good. Thank you. Right, sorry so don't, we don't have SDK, right? No, no SDK that's okay. called. We'll have it okay. scheduled for next week. Okay, okay. Bye bye. Okay, bye.